Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff and as always I also publish on Rumble on the blogger site as an archive post thingy uh, on Patreon for extra support and any kind of updates and as such I uh, go about on the Twitter X platform. Um, yesterday we, we did I, I did the, the launch of the Jedi Survivor episode, today it's going to be Dead Space remake and I also did a uh, live stream uh, even though I got a lot of issues with the live stream mainly i uh, suspect from my end in the sense i don't know if it is something regarding the the, the, the wi-fi connection reaching the limits there uh, uh next time i will try instead of because i'm doing 4k 60 um reaching the limits of the acceptable um uh, thing on youtube uh, maybe i will try 14 14p and see I I if it improves a little bit because this kind of situation uh was more noticeable this time i had to interrupt the stream and and start a new one to try troubleshoot the, the things with that was happening i thought it was obs but i um it's a little bit weird uh but i, I think it is the, the wi-fi i don't know if it, gets a little bit busier sometimes in the house or, or something like that but yeah i don't have a, a way of connecting uh, through the, the landline i'm a completely far away not even a, a, any kind of different so, uh, try different solutions uh, and i cannot manage to to do that through uh, like a land uh, internet cable there but yeah uh, I, I will try in a different way next time um maybe 1440p see if it decreases the the, the busy uh take less bandwidth of the uh, wi-fi of, of the house uh but yeah uh other than that the vod will be i don't know maybe even between today and tomorrow and i will try to stream every day i, I try to stream every day but uh yeah sometimes I, it's not possible given that i don't have a fixed working schedule to make those uh, decisions but yeah um uh, i think that's it regarding the channel uh updates uh and and again when i have time i need to go about my theory regarding newman uh, uh, and the Knox uh, thing there a lot of stuff intertwining between those uh, two factions uh but yeah uh other than that let's go to the news um we got the announcement that Intel is is going to abandon hyperthreading for Lunar Lake CPUs. Uh, this is for uh, the laptop stuff. Uh, I think they will continue uh, with the, the desktop DIY kind of comp the, the usual components, but for laptops and mobile things that you will uh, get a stamp from uh, Lunar Lake, they are going to quit uh, hyperthreading bas uh, basically. Uh, again. Uh, here on the article they say the reason is complicated it's not complicated uh, but it's uh, it is basically it's no longer wanted as uh, as intel strives to maximize power efficiency in portable laptops again this is what you get when you're trying to brute force your way uh, in competition um this has been happening for throughout the last at least I don't know since the 10th generation I think the ninth generation was a little bit uh, uh, a little bit uh, Okay-ish, but it's been from several generations now that Intel is trying to compete with Zen um, or AMD uh, CPUs by just uh, introducing more power to the cores, uh, to and with that, of course, uh, giving more power. You, you need to it consumes more power. It get less efficiency. Temperatures are higher, and we see that um, that situation. Uh, topple uh, with the 13 some 13 and 14 gen cpus with that uh, thing with the um, uh, bios uh, settings on intel motherboards uh that they were burning cpus or, or whatever what's happening there yeah and with that hyper threading of course will uh will um, contribute to the, the power consumption of the chip itself so they basically are uh, trying to get a uh, basically disabling and removing features from the architecture of the cpu so they can compete with amd in terms of efficiency for the laptops again um yeah because they say basically turning on the feature will come to a, a high uh too high a power cost that's why you when you brute force your way instead of trying to get around uh, like amd did uh which 
again the the, the high-end cpus they do have very similar performance uh, give it in gaming and to a certain extent in um in in production wise uh, uh, apps there uh, but usually intel just in some specific cases consumes uh, around double the power to do the same thing uh, even in some cases in games which is a very uh, it's too much i think and with that of course comes higher temperatures of operation um, but yeah they, they, it's the brute forcing of just unlocking more power to uh, power the core so they can clock higher and all that jazz and now we are seeing uh, some concessions in terms of how they're going about it on the laptop uh, part of the, the, the products that they're going to launch and again and also uh, in the same relentless quest for power efficiency they are going to also uh, do what Apple does which is solder memory or solder uh, RAM on the motherboards I don't know why we have now uh, the, the, the I will show you in the next article we got the new um, um, memory stuff there uh, that is going to come out and I think it's going to have mass adoption um, but yeah this is this is not good they, they, they are not in, in, in a good shape here especially on the laptop uh, part of things uh, you're just going Apple just cutting cutting things my thing because I will assume it uh, will not this these alterations will not reflect on the price of Intel um, laptops that's for sure and you just um, removing options for the end user uh, given the fact that you don't have uh, um, hyper threading because it, it's a very simple thing you come uh, you just say okay this supports hyper threading but by default it comes uh, turn off um, if you want to turn on expect less battery uh, be less battery from from a, a, between each recharge something in those lines I think it will be uh, a better uh, concession there uh, the, by default turns off but there is a toggle uh, a button toggle to to, to turn the, the the hyper threading because this uh, to a certain extent if you're operating in a more um, uh, productivity workflow um, yeah this is going to be v much slower than the current uh, AMD CPUs there but yeah it, it's a shame that they are just uh, taking a little bit of an Apple direction which is uh, we decided for you and we don't give you any kind of options in that sense and I think with that people will start to see that AMD especially on the benchmark stuff uh, when people start reviewing um, laptops especially for productivity work uh, people will start noticing huge differences in kind of the same model of laptop even with similar kind of performance uh, CPUs there they will see some uh, perf uh, performance gaps uh, between AMD and Intel that, that's a little bit of my prediction uh, but yeah this is not good for Intel uh, and the fact that the soldering, uh, soldering a thing with the, um, the memory there we got this thing that now Jill Gale I, I don't know how to pronounce this uh, this brand here uh, but it's a very well known on the DIY market they are also introducing their cam or low power cam um, memory modules here I think this is the cam uh, thing uh, and this is the low power cam I think this is going to be more useful for um, the, the laptop thing again it consumes way less uh, I think around uh, half of the, 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 the power consumption it can uh, occu uh, it occupies less 60 something percent in terms of space on the motherboard and it performs uh, at higher speeds and all that jazz so it has better performance uh, uh, in comparison with uh, with this uh, dim slots there, their uh, format thing but yeah they are announcing here this is from Computex uh, again it, it's good to see that uh, more and more brands are doubting this because it will uh, with increase the demand of manufacturing these kind of memories uh, and it, it will push to be a more standard thing especially on the laptop side of things um, and it, and I think this this uh, from everything that I've been seeing this is going to be a, a huge jump in terms of memory performance and even in terms of power savings and also in terms of how um, laptops can be designed because they are uh, thinner uh, they occupy less uh, 3d space let's say on on when you assemble uh, uh, something in the laptop uh, and I think this is going to be uh, uh, very very good on on the laptop and I think 
they should already if you're going to make it thing expensive we should already try and i don't know start introducing this uh, because the companies already have uh, prototyping and uh, on, on this kind of uh, cam and lp cam to a format or uh, i think it's a format it's called designs um but yeah I, I, I enjoy seeing this kind of things uh, because uh, if it gives a lot of advantage, basically the only backdrop at this moment in time is really the, the, the price point because it's basically it's a new format and the, this has to be uh, has to have a lot of mass adoption from uh, a lot of companies uh, for this to be introduced and to a certain extent uh, this technology at the beginning will be uh, the, the, the the cost of adoption is going to be also passed uh, for the end user but uh, at the end i think it's going to be uh, pretty good because uh, smaller faster and less uh, uh, power uh, consumption in terms of the 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 memory there i think it's a trifactor that is going to to improve a lot of of laptops there um and then we got lastly uh, in terms of the industry there uh, i got the the adobe thing um yeah i covered this yesterday uh it was basically uh with the fact that they have access to your work even if it's uh, you are doing some kind of work on any kind of uh, adobe uh, app that is uh, covered by an nd or something like that uh but it, it's a little bit worse than that I, I thought it was just basically that in terms of a privacy thing um yeah um when the warning appears uh supposedly um if you don't uh this is not even like an opt-in or opt-out kind of a function because you're paying for a license of the software to use it um and the fact that when they put these new terms and conditions if you don't uh, accept the app will close it you cannot open the app or use any kind of the, the, the apps there um until uh you accept the terms and conditions and that will leave you uh locked out of any kind of project that we're doing especially if you are using adobe cloud uh, which i think it is basically uh, a service that uh, all the files that you use are stored in the cloud which is just by theoretically this that is not good because they can uh, like any cloud servers uh, the companies can access your your data and the force uh, it's more open to being a breach that data in a hacking event or something like that again and it's a lack of privacy by the fact that they are basically uh, directly telling you they uh, reserve their right themselves and there is even like clarification here uh, this is a statement from adobe solely for the purpose of operating or improving services and software um yeah this is uh, it's it's too broad of, of a thing so they can interpret it as they want basically they, they give themselves leeway of interpreting anything they want as they want uh, it says that the user will grant a non-exclusive worldwide royalty free sub license license to use reproduce publicly display distribute modify create the reality workspace on publicly perform and translate the content so basically you're giving him um work for free for adobe and you are paying for for, for, for for you are paying them for that which is completely if they went for uh if it is if this was like a, a free service uh, where you have to concede certain things it's understandable it's wrong but it's understandable but here you are paying a hefty amount of monthly fees to use the, the depending on the app set you have from adobe and still you are giving them for free uh, uh, uh the, this thing that the licenses is royalty free so basically they can transform they can sell and they can give away your work it's basically what it's a, it's saying here because it can be interpreted like this and you always have to assume the words from any kind of corporation when they introduce this kind of a broad uh, terms of service um but yeah uh, it, it, it's out in the open and and it says here for example we may sub license our right to uh, the content to your service providers or to other users to allow the services and software to operate with others such as enabling you to share photos which is by itself it 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 it, it, it is something that uh, again people all over the place uh, we got uh, some uh, duncan jones uh, this guy is a movie director uh currently see enough he is the um, son of david bowie and he did good good movies 
Uh, it says, hey Photoshop, what the hell uh, was that with the new agreement you forced us to sign this morning that locked our app until we agree with it? We are working on the bloody movie here and now you don't suddenly have the right to any of the work we are doing on it because we pay to uh, pay you to use Photoshop. Again, that's, that's one of the things. Uh, one, uh, th this I think I started to see a lot of stuff from this uh, from this guy on Twitter. I can even get a hold of your support chat to question this unless I agree with the terms <laughs> beforehand, which is uh, funny to say the least. I can then I cannot I cannot even uninstall Photoshop unless I agree that, with these terms. Similarly, supposedly people that are not agreeing they cannot even install the software, which is I invasive like hell. Uh, and then um, a designer, uh, here it is, if you are a professional, if you are under NDA with your clients, if you are a creative lawyer, doctor, or anyone who works with the proprietary files, it is time to cancel Adobe. Delete all the apps and programs, Adobe cannot be trusted. And that's my main takeaway of this. Again, the, a lot of people, these guys didn't understand that a lot of people on the verge, there is a lot of independent and freelance uh, people that uh, they don't even have the money to pay monthly fees for the work that I do with this kind of software and they were on the verge maybe hanging on to Photoshop or even sometimes some Premiere uh, but yeah I think this is the final straw for a lot of people especially uh, independent creators uh, again I assume huge corporations that use this kind of software don't give too much uh, of a shit uh, maybe because they interchange between each other information, but I don't know how, how this is going to work with Adobe. Uh, but yeah, we've got excellent alternatives. Uh, I caught here uh, yesterday from Grams. He was trying to uh, gather information of alternatives to all the apps that Adobe offers. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, first thing for the, um, the, the, the Premiere, you got the, 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 the competition, which is DaVinci Resolve. And I think it's a way better uh editing software again you only have the pain to uh, get yourself uh, accustomed to, to the softwares themselves but they offer pretty much kind of the same features some of them very similar but again it, it's only uh, um, uh, a matter of get for you to getting worse uh, getting used to it uh but yeah first can sell everything um from uh, adobe creative cloud specially and uh, before that, just download everything from the cloud and then cancel everything and delete or delete and cancel everything. Um, uh, and then start looking for alternatives. Uh, and again, when you cancel the service, tell them why you are canceling uh, on the on the on the comment space there. Just tell them why you are canceling that. Uh, and, and again, we got a lot of uh, alternatives here. As you can see, uh, uh, Photoshop got for uh, a lot of those of painting you got a uh, the adobe illustrator i think uh yeah the uh, acrobat uh the the pdf stuff there you got excellent alternatives also again i don't some of them i don't even recognize and uh, audition you got a lot of them also uh yeah you got you got a lot of uh things and you got a, a legend here so you can have like a, a a good view uh the the yellow says that it is free and open source uh, some of them are free of charge Others, when you have to pre-search, it's just a single purchase uh, and others can offer uh, an additional subscription for more functions. Again, depending on the, your criteria of what you want. But yeah, a lot of them are basically just when it's uh, not free, it's like a single purchase. For example, DaVinci Resolve, you just pay the license fee uh, one time and you can use it forever. And everything is done locally on, on the PC. You don't need any kind of cloud services. And it, it, this is one of the things that uh, is mentioned here. You, you basically don't need any kind of cloud service for the, the services to work on. Uh, and you got also where they can work for Windows, Apple. Uh, I think this is Chrome thingy I, I'm not, or Linux. I'm not sure what symbol is this. And got so Android and iOS also. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it is a, a Chromebook kind of a thing there, if it works there, or, but I assume it's Linux. A lot of them are Linux uh, associated with, especially the Vinci Resolve works well on Linux. Uh, I, I think that's how it works. But yeah, uh, I will leave it here, the, the, the tweet uh, for you. If you're thinking about it, at least you got excellent and uh, alternatives for, for Adobe uh, software. But yeah, basically industries is what I got. In, in gaming news, uh, we got uh, announcement of Test Drive Unlimited. 
Solar Crown. Uh, supposedly, okay, this is a good move because they got a, a free demo um, and some PC requirements. Um, again, the demo seems uh, pretty uh, hefty uh, in the sense that it got a lot of stuff for you to try out. So you got basically uh, a little bit more than half of the districts of the island there. You got the first uh, 15 levels of progression, 16 cars, 22 additional cars available, uh, 27 uh, different places, and streets and sharp clans HQs. So we got access, uh, sorry, access to these HQs here. So I, I get to g I think you got a, a, an hefty amount of stuff that you can try out again, and uh, it's good to see. Uh, because again um, at least gives uh, the opportunity of people to see if the game is for them or not um, even though the uh, PC requirements are a little bit heavy here um, 1080p 60 uh, a little bit on on the heavy side I was expecting more in line with uh, I don't know 5600 or, or weaker CPU uh, in terms of GPU uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, for 1440p60, it's a, even more heavy. It's like you have basically have to have like latest gen uh, CPUs, not the, the, the most uh, powerful, but the, at least latest gen G, uh, CPUs from uh, AMD and to 12th generation uh, CPU from Intel. And then uh, to play it at uh, 1440p60 frames. Uh, an RTX 4070 or, a C or an RX 6900 XT, which is a little bit heavy, but I assume it's a little bit more uh, regarding uh, a lot of the VRAM. Seems to be a little bit heavy on the VRAM usage on the GPUs. And supposedly to play 4K60, you need a 4090, basically, and a very high end uh, for uh, uh, 14th gen Intel Core uh, and also a 7900X CPU from uh, AMD. Yeah, it's, this is pretty heavy. Um, I don't know about that. I, I think they're trying to cover uh, things while they patch up the game uh, to be more efficient on the requirements. Uh, the low settings, like 70, 20p, 30 frames. Again, this is bare minimum to for the game to work. But yeah, interesting enough, uh, you can give it a try. I think this is available until June 17. So uh, the game is coming out on September. I think they will use a little bit of this... Um, uh, of this demo uh, to use some kind of telemetry of the, the, the hardware people using and see how it goes to see if they where they can improve on on the things because if you're going to need the mandatory 4090 to play at 4k 60 in a game that it doesn't seem very demanding in terms of uh, uh, visual fidelity and the such uh, because if you can do uh, uh, I don't know play uh, 100 frames end up on, for example, Forza Horizon 5 and even Forza Motorsport. You don't need, pro uh, especially a 1490 to play at 4K 60 kind of a thing there. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit more optimization. But yeah. Uh, in other news, we got uh, Concord. Again, I covered this yesterday or something like that. I was not sure uh, how good or bad this game is going to be uh, in terms of sales. Because I was not sure, but now I uh, I am sure uh, the game is forty bucks. Again, I don't think this is going to sell uh, very good. Uh, supposedly pre-orders are open now. The base game is forty dollars. Supposedly post-launch updates are free. I don't know what this means. Uh, and the beta is coming uh, right around the corner in July. Yeah, and sixty dollars uh, for digital deluxe edition of the game. Uh, again. Um, yeah, this is not going to work what, uh, work out well. Um, yeah, uh, even though they supposedly you start up with the game with 16 playable free gunners, 12 unique maps, sets on various worlds, and 60, uh, di six distinct team-based game modes. And then, po again, post-launch content updates will be free. I don't know what this means. They don't, they are, they don't even give an example of something like that. Uh, what the post-launch content updates because updates can be anything they can update the game to be a little bit uh, uh, I don't know uh, like a couple of skins or just the fact that they are patching stuff because it's an update on the game I don't know and supposedly there are going to be some sort of scheming uh, schemes on um, microtransactions for the cosmetic stuff there for sure uh, like a regular battle pass I don't know 
but yeah the fact is this is only for sure there's going to be a lot of microtransactions and don't forget that this game will launch on PC and PS5 on August 23. Again, uh, I will assume if you if you want to play it, if you don't have access to create a PSN account, you will not be able to play this game because supposedly it's I will assume it's crossplay uh, between PC and PS5. Uh, and given this is uh, from um, yeah, it, it is for sure. This is from PS uh, PlayStation Studio, like main the the first party studios. Again. This will uh, basically uh, will lock you out if you don't have a PSN account, uh, if you don't have the, the ability to create a PSN account. So uh, yeah, you're leaving seven, 177 countries out of the out of the picture. Uh, you're putting a game uh, that it's marketing itself to five percent of a market, and you just yeah, and you're putting a, a paywall, uh, not a paywall. Uh, you're just putting a, a price. Uh, to play the base game yeah I don't think this is going to work pretty well uh, because even for example if you want to play something kind of similar you got Overwatch where I think it's free Overwatch 2 uh, then you pay for the skins and, and the loot boxes and all that jazz but uh, basically I think the base game is played for free and I think if you want to unlock extra characters uh, and stuff like that I think you have to pay for the battle pass or whatever it's called there but yeah this is not going to work out very well for them and yeah I think the default by the end of the day it's going to be uh, gamers uh, they don't uh, they, they, they are ists and phobes uh, and I think that's going to be the end of of the discussion there at least from uh, the side of the the, the PlayStation uh, simps there but yeah it's it, I think it's quite going to be and continue a little bit on that trend uh, we got the interview from Famitsu uh, saying Silent Hill 2 remake stays true to the original mostly thanks to Blue Team I think they are trying to do a little bit of damage control around here uh, because we know that there there was some consultancy on this game some uh, um how do how do i how do they put it some uh, modern modern audience uh kind of updates there on, on some characters and yeah i think they're trying to do a little bit damage control to shift blame on the the, the fact that the people are not liking what they are seeing from uh, silent hill 2 uh supposedly on this interview series producer uh, commented uh, on the remake and his faithfulness to original game revealing that the japanese staff involved in the production of game including designer uh, and sound producer wanted to make some drastic changes over the original again see how this is worded out again i don't know uh, again for me so I, it's a japanese i don't know if there is some um, translation uh, error or there but suppose they wanted to do some drastic changes over the original again they don't specify what kind of changes that they wanted to do from the original we don't know if the changes were drastic or not again supposedly uh, the designer and the sound producer uh, and I think uh, the original sound producer from the original Silent Hills 2 was involved here on the remake if not mistaken I'm not sure about that uh, but yeah this this doesn't mean that uh, that they wanted to go more woke or not on the game or trying to modernize more than it is again uh we don't know uh but yeah the fact that the, it's only briefly mentioned drastic changes over the original we don't know what kind of changes they wanted to make because they don't specify or give an example to any of those changes that they wanted to make uh, but we got information that it was Bloober team that pushed for the remake to be as faithful as possible and in the end it was decided to go with a faith or faithful remake again with the wording modernizing elements were needed again this shows that they are trying to kind of shift flames here I don't know what kind of uh, uh, st struggles and intern fighting there is but yeah I think somebody is going to take the axe um, Again, this is my, the, the the changes of the characters seem a little bit uh, um, acronym mafia uh, directed there. So yeah, I I'm not sure if the the original people and the, the series producer wanted to go make the changes that they wanted to make because we kind of know the influences of the, for example, the character design what they were and why they were uh, like they were uh, and yeah uh, again I don't know uh, it seems a little bit trying to shift blame uh, 
uh, and hit uh, out of out of themselves but yeah uh, at least we got this for me to interview as kind of a proof uh, of not having any kind of proof of shifting blame and finally we got Hogwarts Legacy uh, supposedly going to now uh, give the final update which has the content basically from ex that was exclusive to PlayStation 5 uh, is going to be added to the PC version which is basically the um, Oxmic quest I think shop quest and then uh, a lot of uh, other stuff some cosmetic stuff and all that uh, stuff there and plus some fixing uh, and uh, like uh, gameplay patches and and s s uh, sorry sdk updates so for the dlss stuff in there and everything uh, related to that um but uh, there is also some uh, rumors around that uh, supposedly there's going they want to launch uh, Hogwarts legacy director's cut again if it's something in, is trying to be uh, sold or be made as a uh, Hogwarts legacy director's cut I will assume it's not coming from uh, the regional developer, so Avalanche uh, Studios there. Um, again, this is coming from, uh, usually this guy, is Jason Schreier, usually it's good on reporting, usually. Um, but yeah, uh, he, he did an interview, basically the interview or the article was more about the, 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 the uh, Suicide Squad game. Oh my god, I even have trouble remembering the name of the game uh, from Rocksteady Studios uh, again that is a drama on their own um, and supposedly uh, a director's cut version to uh, of the, the game itself supposedly it's on the works no additional information was provided on this new version so it's not clear if it will differ, to, differ from the massively successful base version of the game again I think there is uh, I think Rocksteady Studios might be on the panic mode because I heard some rumblings they might close because again they uh, to a certain degree they were uh, they were not culpable because it's uh, Warner Brothers up uh, somebody a CEO or somebody on the upper echelons mandated this uh, that Suicide Squad was made the way it is and uh, again this is not going on the strengths of um, of rocksteady studios and even uh, the remaining personnel that it is uh, the the one of the co-founders at least and a lot of developers from rocksteady they went away a few years ago and they founded the new studio i covered the, that studio again i'm terrible with names i completely forgot the name of the studio and they are already working on something very similar on the lines of arkham uh, Batman Arkham series in the line of that kind of game uh, as an independent studio so even the, the the talent that stayed throughout these years on Rocksteady Studios is not the same that did the, the original trilogy of the Batman Arkham games the one that's well revered from Rocksteady uh, so I think they are a little bit on a desperate situation saying oh we can improve uh, what is already a very successful uh, game which is Hogwarts Legacy I don't know uh, maybe some drama inside there uh, but yeah uh, it says that many of the studio employees are now helping to develop a uh, new director's cut version at of Hogwarts Legacy this is referring to uh, Rocksteady uh, uh, developers at the same time according to people familiar the studio leaders are looking to pitch a new single player which will return uh, Rocksteady to its roots again I don't know why they uh, mandated this studio to do um, a game as a service uh, while they their main strength is single player uh, games uh, especially narrative driven games like the Batman series uh, Batman Arkham series which is really good I only didn't play the last one uh, Arkham Knight I played the first two uh, yeah, I, I enjoy it very much as playing as the Batman and, and all the mechanics and the, even the story, the overarching story is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they, they, they mandated for them to do... Uh, uh, I think at the beginning it was supposed to be a more narrative game because from what I understand there is a very narrative heavy um, things around that Suicide Squad games and again uh, they were mandated to probably do afterwards to change to a games as a service then you put all the 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 acronym mafia checklist there and then they got a terrible product that basically made uh, Warner Brothers lose 200 million dollars but yeah this is what I got for news got some deals here got Bioshock the collection 80% off on the free games 
uh, we got Red Dead Redemption 2, 60% off, still a couple of days until uh, the offer is over. Uh, we got, again, August Legacy is still 50% off until the 10th. Um, yeah, and I think it's the, the... I'm not sure if the... I think it's the Deluxe Edition that will offer that... Um, the Summer Update. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm really not sure. Uh, August Legacy, Dark Arts, Garrison Hat, Legacy... I, I will assume that. Uh, we got also Aliens Dark Descent, 45% off. Uh, and lastly, from uh, Steam, we got War Tales, 30% until the 17th, so around 10 days or so. Um, and on GOG, uh, the Plague Tale games are on sale, 80% off on the first one and 55% uh, on the second one. Uh, and continuing, if my PC works... Really? Oh, finally, thank you. Sometimes I have... Very rarely I got this kind of issue changing. Uh, I got a lot of tabs open. Uh, we got Prey, Digital Lux Edition. If you're thinking this might be a little bit over, you can get the standard edition. Uh, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, the the Digital the, sorry digital Deluxe Edition uh, give you access to Prey Moon Crash, which is kind of a roguelike kind of a thing style, uh, a mode for the game. But yeah, very underrated game. I did a series on this game recently and it's got my stamp of approval. And also Void Bastards also has a stamp of approval because I also did a gameplay series on it. So I played the game. Uh, it's recommended. And yeah, 70% off on this one. But yeah, basically this is it for today, guys. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up with a plug on my Patreon for extra support. The extra support is mainly at this moment in time for me to be able to get a storage solution, uh, to get backups or backups and stuff that I do for my clients without the Adobe uh, suite there. Uh, it's everything is uh, kept locally um, and uh, also um, to have extra space for uh, the videos that I make for the channel. And with all that said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. So until then, let me master out.